Hello friends, myself Nand Kudu and today we are going to discuss about the 9th standard topic of science of physics that is the study of the sound. That is the study of sound. Okay. Now, what is the definition, exact definition of the sound? Now, sound is nothing but the type of one, uh, some type of the energy. Okay. This is some type of the energy which feels sensation of hearing okay the sensation of hearing to our ears is nothing but the sound okay so this is the exact definition of the sound what is the sound sound is nothing but the some type of the energy okay which feels the sensation of hearing to our ears is nothing but the sound okay so in your book on the 12th chapter that is a sound that is study of the sound <coughs> here we can see that on the page number 128 the we have to recall some basic information about the sound now this is the definition of the sound what is the definition of the sound then sound is nothing but the one form of the form of the energy which feels the sensation of the hearing to our ears okay now when we <coughs> take that the in sound is what sound is nothing but the type of the energy okay so we know that to pass the energy or to propagate the energy some it uh, propagates in the form of the waves okay so waves are necessary for the propagation of the sound okay we have seen that there are the two types of the waves which one that is a longitudinal wave and the transverse wave okay these are the two types of the waves that is the longitudinal wave and the transverse wave now in the case of the sound which waves are there these waves are nothing but the longitudinal wave okay so Sound waves are the longitudinal wave. When in the form of the longitudinal wave, sound propagates and is nothing but the form of the energy which feels the sensation of our hearing. Okay, so this is the basic information about the sound in the definition of the sound. Okay, the main the, <coughs> what is the main about the wave? That is the main property of the sound that it requires the medium for the propagation. Means the sound requires the specific medium for the propagation. As we know that the light light can pass through the vacuum okay but for the propagation of the sound we require the medium means the medium is necessary for the propagation of the sound okay so this is the definition of the sound so that the medium is necessary for the propagation of the sound okay we have also studied about the wave that is the transverse and the longitudinal wave so sound propagates in the form of the longitudinal wave so what is the longitudinal wave longitudinal waves is nothing but the when the particle consider this is a wave and when this particle start to vibrate from its original position and the mean position in the uh, in the same way as the wave propagates means for example the wave is propagates in this direction then this particle is also vibrates or propagates or start vibrating in this direction means in the same direction then this is nothing but the longitudinal waves uh, but in a transverse waves when consider this is a wave and this is a particle in the transverse wave while propagating the transverse wave when the transverse wave propagates the particle of this wave starts to vibrate from its mean position in which direction in the upward direction and downward direction means which is perpendicular to the direction of the propagation of the wave means the vibration of the particles in the transverse wave is perpendicular to the direction of the propagation of the wave okay so in your book that is given that Sound is a form of the energy which creates the sensation of hearing to our ears, okay, as we have seen the definition of the sound. So, now what is the exact definition of the sound then? Sound is the form of the energy which creates the sensation of hearing to in our ear, okay. Sound is the form of energy which creates or fills sensation of hearing in your ears okay so what is the sound then? sound is a form of the energy which creates the sensation of hearing in our ears okay now the energy is in the form of the wave okay as we have seen that this sounds propagates or the travels in the form of the waves okay 
and the medium is necessary for the propagation of the sound okay and we know that the medium is necessary for the propagation of the sound sound waves gives rise to the chain of the compression and the rare fractions in the medium okay so in the longitudinal wave we have seen that that's a compression and the rare fraction so what is the compression and the rare fraction when the particles travels in the form of the wave then there is a difference in the density of the particles okay there is a difference in the density of the particles when the particles comes close together then it forms a compression okay and when the particles are much more wider or which uh, the distance between the particle is more then it's nothing but the rare fraction means in the density this is of the this is the part of the lower density and this is the part the compression is of the higher density all matters is of the density means when the uh, waves travels or the propagates in specific medium then the particles of that waves start to vibrate from its main position and they comes to close each other okay when they come close to each other then there forms the one special part of the higher density this is nothing but the compression and the part of the lower density this is nothing but the rare fraction which is given in your book that's the rare fraction that's the place where of the lower density okay so the particles of the medium oscillates about their center or the mean position in a direction parallel to the propagation of the wave such waves are called as the longitudinal wave okay consider this is the wave okay and this is the consider this is the wave and this is the particle so consider these are the particles okay so when this wave are traveling in this direction okay then we are given that that is the the particles of the medium okay when they travels in this the medium and this is are the particle of the medium this particles of the medium oscillates about their center or the mean position consider this is the center or the mean position of the particles when the center or the mean position of the particle when wave travels or the propagates in this direction and the, pro the propagation or the vibration of the particles are in the same direction as of the wave then this is nothing but the longitudinal wave okay that is a their center or the mean position that is a particles oscillates about their center or the mean position in the direction which is parallel to the propagation of the wave such wave called as the longitudinal wave okay so this vibration of the particles is in the same direction as that of the wave propagates so this is nothing but the longitudinal wave Okay, now consider what is the compression and the rare fraction. When this particle starts vibrating from their mean position, and then we then propagates in this medium in this direction, then they come close to each other. Consider this is the particles. Okay. In this part of the wave or in this part of the medium, this part of the wave, here the density of the particle is maximum. Okay, the density of the maximum particle is maximum. So we can call this part is nothing but the compression. And here the density of the particle is much lower as com uh, compared to the compression. So this is the rare fraction. Okay, this is the compression and this is the rare fraction. Okay, consider the compression and the rare fraction together it forms a single wave. That is the wave. Okay, so we can say that the one wave that is the one higher lower density and the one part of the lower density together it forms of the wave. Okay, this is the wave. So this is the longitudinal wave. Now what about the transverse waves? Then consider this is the wave, and this is the propagates in this direction. Consider this is the points. Okay, these are the points, or these are the particles of the wave. Okay. Now this, or this is the mean position of the, or the central position of the points. When wave propagates in this direction, these points or these particles of the wave starts vibrating. Okay, this starts the vibrating from the mean position. Without any vibration, the wave there is not <coughs> there is not possible for the wave to propagate in any medium. Okay, for the propagation of the wave through any medium, the vibration of the particle is must. Okay, when the particle starts vibrating, then the any form of the energy, for example, light, for example, sound, for example, heat, for any type of the energy to transfer in through any medium, the uh, vibration of the particles is necessary. Okay, so consider this is the mean position of the particles of the wave. Okay, but in a transverse wave, the trans these particles or these particles of the wave starts vibrating in the upward direction and the lower direction. Means this start this particle starts to vibrate in a perpendicular to the propagation of the wave. Means wave is traveling through this direction and particle starts to vibrate in 
of the sun direction means which is a perpendicular to this propagation of the direction of the propagation of the wave. So this wave is nothing but the transverse wave. So this wave is nothing but the transverse wave and this is a longitudinal wave. Okay. So this is the longitudinal wave and the transverse wave and sound is of the longitudinal wave means sound travels in the form of the longitudinal waves. Okay. So one diagram is given in your page uh, book on page number 128 that is the sound wave can be shown in the form of the graph okay the, the sound wave is shown in the form of the graph okay at a moment during the propagation of the sound wave we would find alternate bands of the compression and the refraction of the medium that's the bands greater and the lesser density okay they are shown that that's the compression and the refraction we have to find two different bands of the higher density and the lower density okay that is a band that is a during the propagation moment during the propagation of the sound wave we would find out the alternate bands of the compression and the refraction okay alternate band uh, a band means after the compression there is a refraction after the refraction there is a compression that's the alternate band of the compression and the refraction what is mean by compression then compression is nothing but the part of the higher density here the particles of the wave are comes to close situation means the distance between the particles is very less as compared to the refraction okay that's the bands of the greater and the lesser density which band is of the greater density that's the compression and of the lower density that is of the refraction okay now the figure uh, changes the density while the figure b shows the changes in the pressure of the and changes in the density of the pressure as shown in the figure of the graph c okay the graph a b and c is given okay in your page handbook okay the graph a is nothing but the changes in the pressure that the graph is given in the graph which is considered this is the wave Consider this is the wave. Okay, now here we have given that to wavelength. What is the wavelength? The distance between the two successive higher. Consider this is a higher, that's a compression, it's a refraction, and this is a compression. Okay, by compression. After the compression, there is an alternate refraction. Okay, the wavelength of the sound wave is indicated by the Greek letter that is the lambda. Okay, so what is the wavelength? This is nothing but the lambda. This is the wavelength. Okay, and the frequency is indicated by the mu. Okay, the frequency is indicated by the mu. The amplitude which is the maximum value of the pressure of the resistance is indicated by the A. Okay, the maximum what is the A is nothing but the amplitude. This is the frequency. This is the wavelength. Okay, this is the frequency wavelength. So, what is the wavelength? Wavelength is nothing but the distance between the two successive compression or the two successive refraction means this is a two successive compression the distance between the two successive compression is nothing but the wavelength so which is denoted by the lambda now what is the amplitude amplitude is nothing but the maximum displacement of the particle from its mean position while traveling in this direction the wave when the wave travels in the specific direction the particles in the wave trans, uh, starts to vibrate okay while vibrating the particles the particles the, uh, the maximum displacement of the particle means the, this is the particle okay it vibrates to this up to this limit okay this is the maximum limit of the particle so this is nothing but the amplitude means the maximum displacement of the particle from its mean position is nothing but the amplitude and the wavelength that's the frequency and the which is denoted by the new and this is denoted by the lambda okay this is the this is about the that's a Wave that's a, this is the that's a compression that is that's the wavelength that's the frequency and the amplitude is all about the wave of the that's a sound that's the longitudinal waves okay so so this is our wave now we have to study the velocity of the sound okay what we have studied now 
that we have studied the definition of the sound we have studied that the medium is necessary for the transmission of the sound we have studied the in, in which form that the sound wave that the sound wave is present in the form of the longitudinal wave what is the longitudinal wave then the, the, the wave in which the particles of the wave starts to vibrate in the same direction as, the, as that of the wave travels okay so now the next is that the velocity of the sound velocity of the sound now what is the velocity of the sound the distance covered by a point on the wave the distance covered by the point on the wave in a unit time is the velocity of sound wave okay so what is the definition of the velocity of the sound wave then the velocity of the sound is nothing but the, the distance covered by the point on the wave in the unit time is the velocity of the sound wave means the point where the point the point is maybe of the higher of the density or of the lower density the point may be maybe at the higher density of the lower, lower density that the point may be present at any point but the distance covered by that point on the wave is a unit time for example this is the wave this is the particles when this wave starts to vibrate this particle also starts to vibrate from its main position and covers certain distance so this is nothing but the the distance covered by the point on the wave in a unit time okay so this is nothing but the velocity of the wave so by the formula what we can say that velocity is nothing but the distance upon time what is the form that is the formula for the that the velocity velocity is nothing but the distance covered in a unit time that is the given time okay any point of the sound wave covers the distance equal to the wavelength in a time period t thus the velocity of the sound given is that is the the any point of the sound wave covers the distance equal to the lambda lambda is nothing but the wavelength okay so what is the unit time the unit time is nothing but the distance covered g is equal to the wavelength okay so wavelength is nothing but the lambda is nothing but the wavelength and t is nothing but the time period okay so in the case of the sound that is the any point on the sound wave covers the distance any point on the sound wave covers the covers the distance equal to lambda lambda is nothing but the wavelength in the time t what is the time t time t is nothing but the time period thus the velocity of the sound we can say that what is the velocity of the sound in the velocity is equal to distance multiplied by distance divided by time okay now what is the distance distance is nothing but the lambda that's a uh, lambda lambda is nothing but the wavelength divided by time period t as we know that the one upon t is nothing but the frequency which is given by the new so velocity is equal to new lambda okay so for the formula of the velocity of the sound is nothing but the new lambda as we know that the velocity is equal to wavelength upon time period and time period is nothing but the one upon time period is nothing but the frequency that's the reciprocal of the time period is nothing but the frequency that's why velocity is nothing but the frequency multiplied by wavelength so the formula for the velocity of sound is wavelength multiplied by frequency okay wavelength multiplied by frequency this is the formula for the time period okay in any medium at a fixed physical condition the velocity of sound difference Uh, different frequencies is very nearly the same. Okay, the velocity is the highest in the solid, at least at least in the gas. It increases with an increase in the temperature of the medium. Okay, we have seen some basic about the sound that the velocity of the sound is maximum in which uh, state of the uh, so uh, which state of the matter that is the, there are the three states of the matter that is the solid, liquid, and the gaseous. As we know that the, the speed of the sound is maximum in which that is in a solid. Okay, and minimum in the gaseous state. Okay. The maximum in the solid state and minimum in the gaseous state. Okay, the speed of the sound. Okay, and increases with the increase in the temperature of the medium, and the speed of the sound is increases with increase in the 
temperature of the medium. This is given in your book. Okay. So, but we are given that the, the any medium at a fixed physical condition, the velocity of the sound of the different frequencies is nearly same. Okay. So the frequency of the sound is given in the meter per second. That's normal. That's the velocity of the sound in various medium, which is given in the twenty-five degrees Celsius. Okay. Aluminum. That's the five uh, five four two zero. That's the gas in the hydrogen. That's the one two eight four. So we can see from this. Uh, block or from this diagram we can say that the speed of the sound is maximum in the solid and minimum in the gas as we have seen in the previous uh, standard okay now so this is the velocity of the sound this is the formula for the velocity of the sound now we have seen, now we have to see that what uh, what is the Effect of the temperature, pressure, and the uh, molecular weight. That is the temperature, pressure, and the molecular weight on the velocity of the sound. How it gets affected by the temperature and the pressure. That is the velocity of the sound. How it gets affected by the temperature and the pressure. Okay. The uh, velocity of the sound in the gaseous medium depends on the physical condition. That is the temperature, density, and gas and its molecular weight. Okay. While traveling through the gaseous medium, that is sound when traveling through the gaseous medium, it depends upon the three things. That is the Temperature and density of gas. Temperature, density of the gas, and its molecular weight. Okay, molecular weight three. These three things affects the velocity of the sound. Now, first of all, let's see first the temperature makes the effects on the velocity of the gas. Okay, the velocity of the sound is directly proportional to the square root of the temperature of the medium. It means that increasing the temperature. For four doubles the velocity. Okay, how the temperature is related to the velocity? Then the velocity is directly proportional to the square root of the temperature. Okay, the velocity of the sound is directly proportional to the square root of the temperature. It means that increasing the temperature four times double the velocity means if you increase the temperature four times. Okay, when we increase the temperature four times, it gets double the speed of the velocity. Okay, this is the effects of the temperature on the Velocity of the sound. Now, what is about the density? Then, that is the the velocity of the sound is inversely proportional to the square root of the density. That increasing density four times reduces the velocity half its value. Okay, that the density which we have shown that the rho that the density is. Inversely proportional to the square root of the that the velocity is inversely proportional to the square root of the density means by increasing the density by four times we get the danger by we get the velocity decreases by half okay it gets decreases by fifty percent okay so what is by the molecular weight the molecular weight the velocity of the sound is inversely proportional to the square root of the molecular weight of the gas means increasing the molecular weight four times. Reduces the velocity to its half value. Okay, it's also similar to the as the molecular weight is also similar to the density. That is the velocity is inversely proportional to the square root of the molecular weight. Means when we increase the molecular weight four times, it gets the velocity decreased by its half of the value. Okay, so this is the half of the value. So let's consider that. While traveling through the gaseous medium of the sound, that the this the three things of the sounds, uh, the the three things or the three, uh, what is this temperature density is nothing but the properties of the gas. Okay, so while traveling through the gaseous medium, the when the sound is traveling through the gaseous medium, the temperature density and the molecular weight of the gas affects the velocity of the sound. Okay, now what is the uh, how it affects? Okay. So when the velocity of the sound means the when the sound passes through the gaseous medium, then the velocity of the sound is directly proportional to the square root of the temperature. Means is directly proportional to the square root of the temperature. Means well, means as the temperature increases, temperature increases, the velocity is also increases. Okay. As the temperature increases, the velocity is also increases. But in which ratio? That the when we increases the temperature four times, then our velocity get increases by its doubles. Okay. For example, this is the when we increases the. For example, initial temperature is of the twenty degrees Celsius. When we when we increase it four times, that when it gets to eighteen degrees Celsius, initially if the velocity is twenty meter per second, then it gets forty meter per second. Means when the temperature increases by four times, then the velocity then the velocity of the sound gets double. Okay. 
so this is in the form of, in the case of the temperature okay now in the case of the density then the velocity of the sound is inversely proportional to the square root of the density it means when the temperature when the velocity increases oh, sorry when the density increases the velocity decreases that is a inverse proportion means the velocity is inversely proportional to the square root of the density yeah, but in which ratio that is a when the velo <coughs> that is a when the density is increases four times then the velocity decreases by its half okay means it decreases by 50 percent also the same in the case of the molecular weight that's the velocity is inversely proportional to the square root of the molecular weight but in which ratio that's a when the molecular weight is increases four times then the velocity get by get decreases by its half okay so this is nothing but the effect of the molecular weight effect of the temperature and effect of the density it may ask in your question that is the how the temperature and the temperature density and the molecular weight is related to the velocity of the sound means how the temperature affects the velocity means how the velocity gets affected by the temperature then we as we know that when the temperature increases the velocity is also increases okay but how in which ratio for example they given the one statement that when we increases the temperature four times okay when we increases the temperature four times then what will happen to the velocity of the sound okay but uh, as we know that the temperature velocity is directly proportional to the square root of the temperature when we increases the temperature four times our velocity get double okay our velocity get double okay if they ask the question that is the when the density of the gas or the density of the gas is increases four times then what it depends on the velocity of the sound okay as we know that the density is that the velocity is inversely proportional to the square root of the density okay okay so when we increases here hence we increases the density by the four times then our velocity of the sound get decreases by the 50 percent means it gets half of this original velocity okay also in the case of the molecular weight if they ask what happens to the velocity of the sound when the molecular weight of the gas get increases four times when we increase the molecular weight four times then the velocity of the sound gets reduced to the half of its original velocity because the velocity is inversely proportional to the square root of the molecular weight okay so this is the effect of the temperature molecular weight and the what that's the density of the uh, gases on the sound so and also the one thing is given that is the audible frequency infrared and ultrasound okay audible so what is the audible so there is some specific range of the sound means there is some specific range of the sound which is which, which is audible to our ears okay this is nothing but the 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz okay 20 hertz 20 kilohertz is nothing but the audible frequency means the sound waves or the sound which is present between these two limits means of the means if the sound is of the 25 hertz then it is audible to we can able to hear this sound absolutely we can able to hear this sound why because the audible frequency is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz okay so the sound of the 25 hertz can be easily audible to our ears okay so this is nothing but the audible range so uh, the limits of hearing of the human ear is 20 hertz to the 20 kilohertz okay so this is the human ear can hear the sounds of the frequency in this range okay so the sounds of the frequency which that's 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz is uh, which is audible to our ears okay the sound of the frequency is called as in, in this range so this sound are called as the audible sounds okay our ears cannot here the frequency is lower than 20 hertz and higher than 20 kilohertz sound with the frequency smaller than 20 hertz is called as the infrasound and the sound produced by the pendulum and the sound generated by the vibrations of the earth crust and just before the earthquake are example of such sound okay the sound waves with the frequency greater than the 20 hertz are called as the ultrasound okay that's the infra and ultra Okay, 
Now we have to see in the what is the range. That's the audible range of the sound. Okay, audible range of the sound. Now what is the audible range of the sound? Then means that there is a certain frequencies of the sound. As we know that the frequencies are the property of the sound waves. Okay, so the every wave should have some specific specific frequency. Means which type of the frequency we are audible? Okay, the frequencies which is between the twenty hertz to the twenty kilohertz means the sound ranging in this pattern means. The sound ranging that 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, and all the sound which are having the frequency within these limits is is audible to our ears. Okay, then which are the sound which is having the frequency lower than 20 hertz? Then which we have what we call that sound? We call that sound that the intra sound. Okay, this called as the intra sound, and the sound which is having the frequency more than the 20 kilohertz, which called as that the ultra sound. Okay, this is the intra sound. This is the ultra sound, and between the intra and the ultra sound, there is a specific audible range is present okay so what is the example of the infra sound sound range uh, sound there means which is not audible to our ears so the example is nothing but the sound produced by the pendulum of a watch okay so the watch may as the sound produced by the pendulum of the watch is nothing but the infra sound also the sound made by the earth crust before earthquake okay as we know that our the earth crust is always in a rotating condition means the crust of the earth is always rotates and the sound why we are not able to hear the, the we are not able to hear the sound of that earth crust because the sound of the earth crust is lower than the 20 hertz means this is the, the sound of the frequency lower than the 20 hertz that's why we are not there that's why this frequency sound is not audible to our ears that's why we are unable to hear the sound of this frequency okay now what is the ultrasound then? The dog, mouse, bat, dolphin have the special ability to hear the ultrasonic sounds. Okay, they can hear or sense some noise which are audible to us. Children under five years of the age and some creatures and insects can hear the voice with the frequency up to the twenty-five kilohertz. Bats, mice, dolphins, etc. can also produce the ultrasound. Okay, then some uh, the, the, some animals are given for examples that is the. Uh, Dog, mice, bat, and the dolphins, also the babies, which is a, uh, under the five years, are able to hear the sounds up to the 25 kilohertz, which is uh, uh, up to the 25 kilohertz, which is not the audible frequency, means this are the exception means the uh, normal human being this audible frequency we can hear the only sound up to the 20 kilohertz but the uh, ultrasound which is more than the 20 kilohertz these uh, animals for example dog mice and the dolphins use the ultrasound for the communication and they also able to hear the uh, sound of this frequency okay so this is nothing but the range of the audible frequency what we call the uh, frequency lower than uh, this this is the infrasound and greater than this this is the ultra so okay so this is the range of the audible frequency okay